Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And while I was thinking about final project ideas for students in my guitar amplification and effects class at Georgia Tech, I came across this weird pedal called the harmonic percolator, which is really basically just a fuzz pedal, but it's a particularly aggressive sounding fuzz pedal. There are some instruments and technologies that are particularly associated with particular musicians. For instance, if it wasn't for Johnny Greenwood, very few folks nowadays would know about the Owen Martineau. And if it wasn't for Wendy Carlos, few people would know about the digital keyboard synergy. The fact that harmonic percolators are on anyone's radar screen at all is probably down to it being championed by recording engineer and shellac and big black guitarist Steve Albini. So, let's dig into the schematic of the Interfax Harmonic Percolator HP1. I just can't get over how weird this circuit is. So, this particular schematic was created by George Giblet, not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, with the help of a bunch of folks from the Harmony Central and Aaron Stompbox forums. So, the signal comes in here, goes through this mess in front, goes through a couple of transistors, then has some back-to-back -back clipping diodes at the output and then through a fairly standard output volume control. Notice that the diode clippers have a resistor on one of the legs but not the other, so this is going to have some asymmetric distortion. Also notice that there's no tone shape in circuitry after that. A lot of guitar distortion effects that use back-to-back -back clipping diodes like this, like the Boss DS1 or the Proco Rat, will have some kind of tone shaping circuitry after it to, say, tame some of the high frequencies you get out of this distortion so it's not too fizzy. There's none of that here. So this pedal is like, ah, have all these trouble frequencies in your face, which makes sense that it would appeal to Steve Albini. If you listen to recordings of Big Black or Shellac, Steve has a very trebly kind of sound and not trebly in the quote-unquote vox chimey kind of sense, trebly in the a swarm of mutant bees are attacking you and want to devour your face kind of sense. So, besides the output volume, the only really other control you have here is the volume control at the input. That controls how hard you're driving these transistors, and hence the amount of distortion. It's not just a volume control. It also forms low-pass filter with C1 here. Let's see, so the time constant for that would be the two legs of the resistor in parallel times C1. And so the cutoff frequency would be 1 over 2 pi, that time constant. Anyway, the diode clippers are fairly standard. The input's fairly standard. What's interesting is this two transistor structure. Let me start by supposing we already figured out all the bias voltages and currents. I'll come back to that point. And let's just do what you would consider a small signal or AC analysis. Let's assume that this AC coupling cap and this AC coupling cap and this AC coupling cap are all shorts. And let's assume that this giant cap here, this bypass cap, is also a short. If I think about it that way, well, I see that the emitters of the PMP germanium and the PMP silicon transistors are both grounded. So each of these is really a common emitter amplifier. To make that a little clearer, let me clear out some space here. So I'm not going to worry about the diode output. That's not the interesting part as far as what we're looking at right now is. Let me take this whole section up here, copy it, and squoosh it down here. And then let me grab some sort of wire here. So let's take that and copy that here. You get the idea. Something like that. Okay, imagine this is a nice line connecting those. Anyway, there really is a capacitor here, so I would want to draw that in, but we're treating caps as shorts right now. And let me clear all of this out just to make it a little more obvious what's going on. Okay, so if we draw it like this, it becomes evident that we have two common emitter amplifiers where each of these has sort of a shunt kind of feedback from the collector back to the base. 
So here I have a feedback resistor of 220K, and here I have a feedback resistor of 750K, but it's all local feedback. You could really sort of treat each of these separately. So Q1 has a load resistor of 20K, and then Q2 has a load resistor of 91K. And if we had gone through the effort of figuring out what all of the bias currents are, we could figure out the gain of each of these stages and then figure out what we get with the feedback, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a pretty standard two transistor amplifier kind of structure as far as the signal flow goes. And I should make it explicit that this is a junction. There we go. The weird thing about this circuit is the biasing. So as far as the DC bias goes, I want to get rid of all of the capacitors. We open up all of the capacitors. So we open up this. I said we open up this. There we go. All of this is open now. All right. So there's current flowing from up here at the 9-volt supply down through R3, through Q2 and R1, and then back into the base here, then through Q1 and R2, and then through R4, and then to ground. Now, I'm not going to try to figure out what all of the bias parameters are here. The thing I want you to note is that Q2 and Q1 share a bias current. That's weird. Maybe this is a trick to try to save battery life or something like that? I'm not really sure. I don't think I've seen this before. Usually when you see a two transistor amplifier, they're their own thing with their own bias current, and maybe one is feeding back to the other or whatever. But to have them share the bias current like this, that's kind of strange. If you've seen something like this elsewhere, please leave a comment below and let me know. And also let me know if there's any weird guitar pedal designs that you would like me to take a look at like this. I can find a schematic. Or if there's no schematic, if somebody wants to send me a pedal, I could reverse engineer it. That could be fun. I don't know. Let me know.